Greetings, you've landed at the VUC, IP Communications and VoIP Community. We would like to thank Simwood.com for their support. Simwood can turn you as a developer into a telco. Our hosted PBX is from OnSIP.com. You can go to GetOnSIP.com for a URL people can click to call you. We've been privileged over the last five years to be using the best conference bridge on the planet. Yes, I'm talking about ZipDX.com, full-color, full-featured, full-HD conference bridge. Our website, VUC.me on the web, is hosted by Bluehost.com. And our worldwide local rate dial-ins are from Voxbone.com. All right, thank you, Michael, and uh, we have a <laughs> really exciting time for you because we dragged some random Aussie out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning to join us and talk about some random PBX. No, it's not a random PBX, and uh, Rob Thomas. Welcome, Rob. Welcome back, I guess. Good or morning. Good morning. Uh, and, Rob, you promised to tell us, give us some history before we get the other guys in, and then you'll introduce them. Um, let's let's go with uh, the first days of Free PBX. Tell what it is it what is it and how did it start? Well, the the background behind Free PBX, um, and I, I realize that Free PBX hasn't been on VUC for uh, you know, I think it was like seven years or something. Um, but Free PBX is uh, in a global thing. A, basic configuration tool for asterisk. So everyone knows what asterisk is. FreePBX turns asterisk from a basic VoIP server into a fully functional PBX. So uh, this all started back in 2004, uh, if I remember correctly, 2004, um, when it was called Asterisk Management Portal, and it was written in PHP 4 and Perl and Bash scripts and a whole combination of all sorts of things, and it was you know it was really cool at the time. When you think back in 2004, PHP wasn't object oriented. Perl was only slightly object oriented. Yeah, it was hard to do cool things. And suddenly, here is this GUI that lets you configure asterisk, and it was realistically the first open source PABX. You know, it, you know, there was nothing else on the market to even come close to it. So from there, we um, uh, it was made by a company called Coalescent Systems in Canada, which is quite in interesting in now that FreePBX is owned by a Canadian company. I'm just going to move my camera just down a touch. Um, uh, but, yeah, sorry, it was uh, owned by Coalescent Systems. Uh, they pretty much ran out of time uh, and money to look after it. And I took over FreePBX, and I ran FreePBX for a good couple of years, um, brought it slightly forward um, in that, you know, it got lots of useful things. As an asterisk, I forget, this is asterisk was evolving as well at the time. We started with asterisk 1.1, which was pretty god-awfully terrible at the time. Um, and when I left, we were just at asterisk 1.6, which had really useful things like ability to use ring groups that worked and, and paging and things that actual people wanted in a phone system. Um, anyway, I, the same thing happened to me. It's happened to Coalescent in that I ran out of time and money. And Philippe Lindheimer, who couldn't unfortunately join us in this call, um, took FreePBX over, and uh, I'm look, looking at the history, it couldn't have gone to a better person. He uh, he took it and ran with it and brought it, uh, put a lot of work into making it a modern phone system. He partnered up with uh, Tony, who is also in this call. I'll, I'll introduce you him shortly, as part of Schmooze, a Schmoozecom, and... Um, Pretty much the rest of that is history. Uh, Schmoozcom employed me again a couple of years ago, I guess four or five years ago now, and um, since then everything's been going amazingly. We've uh, the latest version of FreePBX is version 13, and we've moved to uh, Bootstrap, Twitter Bootstrap, as the the main. Uh, 
<sighs> Andrew, what would you describe Bootstrap as? Andrew, uh, which I should introduce, is the, currently the lead Freebie X developer. He's still muted, I notice. Um, Andrew uh, spent pretty much almost an entire year rewriting the front end of FreeBBX to make it usable in a modern environment in that it's uh, localizable, it's internationalized. We have um, a public uh, web late server and we have lots of people who are continuously adding FreeBBX translations. Um, and things are going really well. January 1st, 2015, ShmoozCon was bought by Sangoma, um, which uh, has been, like for me, the only thing that has changed for me is that um, I now get shouted at by two people rather than just one. I get Tony to shout at me and then random Canadians shout at me as well. Um, but Andrew is the one who's been doing all the work recently in FreeBBX. Um, I was just the guy who started the ball rolling many years ago. Andrew is the one who's been doing all the cool stuff. We also have a couple of other developers. Uh, we hang out in IRC a lot. Uh, we're in the hash FreeBBX channel on Freenode. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have yeah, well, we have a lot of developers. Sorry, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say a couple. We have a lot of developers. We actually have uh, uh, it's. Really good. I actually got a bunch of uh, emails from GitHub. We're all on GitHub, of course. We're a fully open source project. And uh, just yesterday, I had almost a screen full of pull requests on GitHub, which was really nice to see. Um, that's pretty much it. That's what FreeBBX has been and where it is now. Uh, at the moment, we are localized. We're um, accessible. We've done a lot of work in making it usable on mobile devices. There are some things that you don't um, uh, yeah, you don't expect to use on a mobile. For, for example, one of the things that's that's new and exciting in FreeBX 13 is we have a fully integrated firewall, and that firewall is actually really smart in that it listens to asterisk, it monitors registrations, it um, blocks and unblocks ports on the fly. It's it's really quite clever. Um, things like that you don't expect to use a mobile interface for. If you're you know changing firewall settings, you don't want to be doing that on an iPad. But almost everything else is uh, usable through mobile, especially UCP. UCP is the user control panel, which is... Um, I, I wouldn't know how to describe UCP. It is a be-all and end-all to um, talk to your PBX as an end user. It is an end user's interface to your PBX. You can do your voicemail, you can make you make phone calls through um, WebRTC and it's all integrated in free PBX through, if, sorry, int integrated via UCP. So look, that's that's where free PBX is now. I don't know what else, what else would you like to know? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> right now as you're, you're, you're Nobody's looking at this because we can't find the, <clears throat> that was a beep, it's video for some reason. There's no video live stream anywhere. But we are audio, and um, we should go ahead with the agenda that, that you have, which is there's a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, right? There are things. There's and then we, phones. We, we need the live demos as well. Well, we can't do a live demo if we don't have video. So let's, let me work on that while the guys are talking about um, the, either the future or blue. whatever you want to talk about. You've got really blue and Zyloni in, in my video. It's <laughs> well, that's because I am blue and Zyloni, but if you want, if you must, um, here, is that better? <laughs> well, how about this? You know, nobody can see this. That's what's funny. We're come, here I am clowning around, uh, but we I need to try to find the video. We, we don't have it. So what we need now is some talk, talk radio about FreeBBX. Go for it. Um. I actually forgot what I what I was going to talk about. Remind me, hey, well, Andrew. I Andrew, all that. Andrew, so Andrew. Well, I, I should I should introduce introduce the people who are actually in here. Andrew, as I said, is the currently developer of FreeBBX. He's been spending pretty much his entire life um, caring about FreeBBX 13. We also have uh, Preston McNair, who's in marketing and knows all about all the cool stuff that's happening. Uh, I know nothing. And we've also got Tony Lewis, who is the VP of Sangoma US, I believe. He uh, previously the owner of Schmoozcom. 
But uh, Andrew is the guy who knows what's going on at the moment. Although he looks like he's frozen. Oh, no, no, he's there. Oh, sorry. Tell us what's yeah. been happening in BX. I mean, you kind of narrowed it down, or you kind of, I don't know, said it. But um, I guess I could say the future. We want to go with, uh, it, it, in the future, we're hoping to do more um, calendar support linking in, so time conditions based on calendars and all the fun calendar stuff with Google and whatever you can think of with calendars. Um, that, I mean, what else? We've got HTML5 technology in um, FreePBX 13, so playing back um, recordings or um, CDRs or anything that you have on there, even sound report recordings, it, it scales it for the browser, so it will uh, convert it, specifically use the codec that the browser supports to be able to play it back in the browser. So, I mean, we're just trying to use as much HTML5 coolness as we can. Um, responsive design, all that kind of stuff. All those, I could just keep throwing out buzzwords here. Buzzwords, buzzwords, buzzwords. Um, most recently, Rob and I are working on TLS support in FreePBX, trying to get it to, um, you know, WebRTC needs TLS now, where it needs SSL technically. Um, and all the apps that we have that integrate with FreePBX and then Apache itself using the same certs and then phones using the same certs, you know, so that you have secure everything all around. Uh, SRTP, TLS, um, we already support DTLS to a degree, but... Um, we're all trying to work on integration. So, mm. and as FreePBX goes along with Syngoma more into the future as well, we're trying to do more UC stuff. So, um, you know, in the future, screen sharing. Um, right now, we just launched our uh, our desktop app, which does, um, you know, um, what is it? You see incoming call notifications, and it can do pop-ups. So you could you can pass uh, variables through the dial plan, and then it will pop it up and, and show that link with the variable in it. You know, which is helpful. And so that's that's kind of the road we're on is is unified communications, both in open source and in our commercial world, at the same time. And then obviously, obviously our phone. Our phone. Mm. And uh, the phone the phone is actually really exciting. I um I only realized the other day it does ZRTP. It, um, the end-to-end -end like decryption that. doesn't require Zed anything else. Yeah. RTP Americans, note Zed RTP. Zed RTP. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't oh, even realize that. I was looking through the setting the other day, and I went, oh, my God, that's Zed RTP. This is really good. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't be talking too much about the phones. I know nothing about these phones. Preston and, and Tony are the guys. I've got one sitting on my desk, and that's pretty much all I know. I, uh, it, you know well, that's push probably good to get Preston to come and talk all about the phone. And well, we uh, well, Tony is our subject matter expert on the phones. Am I muted still? No, you're no, not. You're okay. okay, so... Um, can, we, can, we, thing... can, we, can we leave the phones for a little bit? I've got some questions about uh, free PBX before we move on to the... Yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for sure, it. Sure, sure. I mean, one, one thing that we didn't cover on free PBX was kind of where it's at and where it's being used today. I mean, if, if we look at the stats of where where the installs are. I mean, we're in over 220 countries and territories. I mean, there's only about 180 countries, <laughs> so we have to say territories. So uh, huh. you know, globally, we have uh, millions of installs. Um, Tony, what's the latest number on number of installs per day? Um, well, it all depends how people are installing FreePBX, but if they install FreePBX through the FreePBX distro, which is our own complete distro, FreePBX and Asterix, uh, over 500 uh, unique installs a day. You know, if you start accounting for all the other ways that people install in free PBX, whether it's Elastics or, uh, you know, still Trixbox systems or PBX in a flash or Asterix now or hand installs, you know, well over 1,500 a day. That's impressive. I did not realize it was that much. That's a lot. So you're more infamous than you thought, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, this, you, I don't know who, would, who uh, this question is to, really. I, I guess it's probably to Andrew. But I, Rob mentioned that uh, you, you're, the, the way that you've been developing FreeBX is, is, of course, uh, largely linked to the development of, of Asterisk. And, uh, of course, Asterisk introduced the ARI, the Asterisk mm -hmm. RESTful Interface. Um, are you, are you leveraging, leveraging this technology now? Are you, uh, are you making Not use of it? We're not using it yet. We have uh, the way you can add users and, and whatnot through FreePBX. I've done um, so. Uh, Digium actually hired some interns about two years ago, and they actually rewrote a voicemail app in ARI. It's pretty complicated, and it replaces the normal voicemail app that's in there right now, which is Comedian Mail. Um, mm -hmm. I've actually played with that, got it half working, and then got busy. So 
Our plan is to be able to use that in the future, but right now we're not. So um, I know that we want to use more ARI. We can link into it. It works. It's on. Um, you can add users to it. You can add applications to it. Um, it's just there's not an official application yet. I would think the first one's going to be voicemail once I get it fully working. I, the code is on my system from Digium, and it's modified to work with uh, MySQL because they wrote it to work with Postgres. So I modified it to work with MySQL. I got it uh, like 80% or so, and, and that's where I'm at. So yes, I want to, but no, right now, there's not anything. That's an interesting answer, particularly the bit about Postgres and uh, MySQL. What's wrong with ODBC? But we won't go there. Um, OK. If I may well, interject, we ODBC actually already ODBC. use we yeah we use ODBC for everything now anyway. So realistically, we probably should. Moving forward, when we actually get this to a production stage, we'd use ODBC. There's no reason not to, because we've already got that okay. set up already. On the I machines. should really just fix their driver, their, their voicemail drivers to use OBDDC and get rid of Postgres and MySQL, and then be fine. Hmm. That, that would um, improve the whole thing. Yeah, it's an interest, interesting that they would do that. But then again, as you did say, they were interns, so uh, they, they may not seem <laughs> particularly out of the box, <laughs> at least initially. Okay, so you're using you have WebRTC capabilities that are, are integrated into the PBX itself. Absolutely. Um, so, are you using the Respoke interface for that, or is it something different? No, we use uh, it's it's direct WebRTC into Asterisk. So it's the WebRTC socket. That's the web sockets layer that they provide. Um, I the library I use is JS SIP on the back end. It's it's slightly modified because there's features and things that Chrome has brought in that's broken Chrome. So there's some things that have to be done with the uh, the SDP packets. Yeah. Um, but besides that, yeah. So it's basically your browser uses uh, JS SIP, which is what the library we use, and it connects directly to Asterisk. Um, using their web sockets that they provide. Okay. Uh, I, I think one of the neat things on that too is for anyone who actually knows FreeCX or uses it, the way we do the WebRTC is it's tied to your primary extension. So when you're logged into UCP, if your primary extension ever gets a call, your WebRTC phone rings. And more importantly, when you make outbound calls, it follows the rules of your normal uh, desk extension. So whatever caller ID settings are set and permissions for call recordings and what routes and trunks to use are all just honored as your primary extension. So it's just it's just an extension of your primary extension. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I sort of get get the idea of that, which is which is good. Um, that, that's extremely useful for people people just to be able to take an iPad or whatever with them, and that's your phone as well, already done uh, nicely for you. But what happens with codecs with this? I mean, if you're using JS SIP, um, I don't know what, you, what you're using for media behind it, just the uh, the browser, I guess. So that browser is going to have uh, Opus support and 7.11 support. And uh, 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 Opus being the problem here when we go anywhere near Digium. Yes, exactly. They're scared to, and rightfully so, rightfully so, they're scared to death of you know those four or five potential patent holders on Opus. <laughs> Okay, so how, how do you how do you handle that? Does that mean it's seven eleven basically? Yeah, it's just transcoded through the back through Asterisk does the transcoding for me, so it's just G seven eleven or VP V eight pass through if you're doing video. Yeah. Yuck. Okay. <laughs> well, then I've got other questions on, on on where you would actually use free PBX. Who, who I mean, who's the target here? I what, it, I would presume that uh, where. When you, if you look at a classic installation for a, an ITSP, maybe of of uh, half a dozen asterisk instance, instances uh, fronted by a couple of Camellios, so you've got SIP proxies in front. Um, it, I guess that's not the sort of user you're aim, aiming for. I, I, I'm guessing you're more u aiming for the small business type. Uh, well, no, actually, other it, it, we we go from SMB to enterprise. I mean, for <clears throat> Sengom, we have an appliance line, and for that, we we gear that appliance line for up to about a thousand users uh, per system. But that's uh, that's just because that's kind of the mark that you know anything above a thousand users, you know, you're you're going to look at going with heftier heftier carrier grade servers. That um, we do a lot of install. You know, in, you know, consulting with larger organizations. I mean, I've got there's an organization they've got forty thousand extensions hanging uh, on various systems across the globe. You know, forty thousand employees. 
you know, doing billions of dollars a year in revenue. So it, it scales nicely. I mean, I use it on my home phone system, and you know, the same platform is is running. You know, a, you know, forty thousand employee company. So you know, it's it's uh, you know, the free and free PBX is freedom. I mean, you can really take it and do what you want with it. Don't forget, there are installs of FreePBX that run on Raspberry Pis. You know, they, it runs on a machine this big to handle, you know, a couple of extensions up to a big ass, you know, a four core, sorry, four CPU, uh, twenty four core machine handling thousands of extensions, as Preston said. Yeah, it, it's it's very flexible from tiny to massive. Actually, uh, one of the things that we should we should mention too is. We were in Canada last year um, at Stangoma, and we had Matt Jordan up from Digium, and we were talking about how Asterisk um, isn't scaling all that well with large numbers of users. And he, we actually did some performance testing while we were there in Canada, and we realized that um, SIP hints were one of the things that were causing a massive issue on reloads with large number of extensions. And while we were there in Canada that week, um, Matt Jordan spent a, a good chunk of time rewriting recipients and took reload time from, uh, I think it was like 10 minutes down to one minute. You know, it's a, a literal order of magnitude improvement on reloads just because you know we all managed to get together and nerd out quite happily together. That was a, a really good yeah, thing for the big, so they don't... That was a 5,000 user stage system and you know, reloading asterisk and all the dial plan for a real environment with call centers and hints was... Ten minutes and it's down to a minute now, and that was just you know one big improvement. <laughs> so we, we did, thirteen has done a lot of focus. FreePBX thirteen has done a lot of focus on the scalability of FreePBX, so we can start comfortably going to ten thousand users without having to throw huge hardware with lots of customizations on it. But so, uh, complete aside, this one. But uh, are you are you tracking uh, asterisk uh, versions now into, into FreePBX as well? Yeah, we have no. from we uh, asterisk versions. Um, well, first of all, they're yeah. saying no. Yeah. That was just a coincidence, right? <laughs> oh, you're no, no. Are you saying we're? Oh, you're saying are we actually following their re, like our version number is the same as theirs? No. Yeah. Okay. No. It's just we went we went from version two two point eleven to version twelve. Um, because the, the the two point had no relevance to reality at all, so we went. Oh, look, we'll just go to, to single digit major versions. Which is funny because um, uh, Asterisk did the same thing because <laughs> they did <laughs> one point two, one point four, one point six, one point eight, then ten. So, and we did the same thing. We went to two eleven, twelve. <laughs> so. yeah. uh, one thing we do do with Asterisk versions is uh, with with our distro, it's kind of unique where we can actually switch on the fly different Asterisk versions. Um, I don't know the developers want to hint into that a little bit, but you know, if you're looking at moving from, say, an Asterix 11 to an Asterix 13 uh, on your system, that's something with our platform can be done really easily. Oh, I love it. It's so good for developers. Like one of the things, I'm a massive fan of PJSIP. Um, so uh, for those who don't know, I'm... <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Asterisk, in, Asterisk version 12 uh, introduced PJSIP, and it is a really solid, now, I should point out, now it's really solid and, and stable implementation of a SIP stack that works in parallel with the legacy Chan SIP stack. Um, and when we're developing things like, you know, the code to uh, write all the PJ SIP config, it's amazingly good for us to go asterisk version switch and change between version 8 and uh, 1.8 and 10, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, it's, and we can actually do it on the fly without an outage. You can literally go asterisk version switch, and then it'll download all the new things and tell asterisk to restart when convenient, and when there's a, a, a break in calls, it'll just rebuild and off you go. It's wonderful. But does that answer your question about nerding there? <laughs> Sorry, Andy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's great. I, it, I'm, uh, I'm, I have to admit, free PBX is one of the ones that I have really not looked at, uh, mainly because anything that's got GUI on it um, turns me off pretty much. But that's down to a lot, lot to do with my, what I do for a job. Yeah, inverted snob, that's what you are. <laughs> yeah, so <right. laughs> <laughs> it's a, again, look, when you look at free PBX, it is not for somebody who wants to write dial plan. Um, 
what it does is it gives you all the functionality that 99% of people need. It gives them ring groups, it gives them voicemail, it gives them everything they could possibly want out of the box. It's when you want to start doing complex things, such as run an ITSP, when obviously it's not going to be any good for that at all. That's when you, you want to write dial plan. But if you do like the command line, we have recently added uh, uh, some nice command line functions with our FW console um, application. Well, come on, Andy. Uh, it's task for the weekend, if you don't go one up, is to uh, put one up and we'll have a play. I was about to say, I'm, on, I'm about to da download it from GitHub, and I shall put it on a Raspberry Pi 2 and see what we can get out of it. Oh, that'll be painful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There is actually a Raspberry Pi distro you can download and put it on an SD card, so it will save you a lot of time if you just do that, honestly. Uh, yeah, but will that have been uh, compiled under the uh, Raspbian Jesse version? Um, yeah. And will it will it uh, cope with multiple cores? Yes. Yeah, yeah. the, the yeah, Pi two is significantly quicker than the Pi, so you you know you might it's it's all it's it's the kind of machine you used to run Asterisk on. You know, in production five years ago, so or <laughs> in fact less maybe. So it's not totally implausible. Mm. No, and, and, and it's kind of funny, Rob. I don't think Rob and Andrew have seen this. So this is a. Uh, I'll try to show it on my video. This is a new, um, a, a small mini appliance we have launching from Sangoma. Oh so wow! It's extremely small. That's got a USB um, three port on it. It's well, it's got three one gigabit NICs, a USB three HDMI oh, no, and no. console. <laughs> And it's um, it, this thing. So I did a bunch of load testing on this, and I'm running. I can run uh, well over 30 concurrent calls on this little box with no problem. Wow! And when can we have them, Tony? Um, if, well, email me, and I'll get you. I'll get you one of the prototypes over to play with. Right. Well, we're we're, we're definitely play with that. We? <laughs> it's all x86 based, so it's not even it's not even ARM based. It's all x86 based. Um. And it's it'll be launching here in the in the next couple months for uh, for people that are looking for a small embedded platform that is the size of a little bigger than a cigarette you know, yeah. cigarette box. That's, that's, that's brilliant. Amazing. I think that's what, exactly what lots of people do want. It's that form factor, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Tuck put away. It, put it in so the it's, got, it's got 32 it's got 32 gigs of storage in it and two gigs of memory. So it's um you know it's it's designed to handle people the, the small remote offices. Um, and still be all x86 based for people that just want to stay x86 and not have to deal with ARM and battling things that don't work in ARM. We do also have it loaded and working on Edison's, but uh, Tim, Tim, you know, that's, a, that's a little painful. <laughs> Tim gets really the, about things like that. Mm. I, I do, this is all news to yeah, me. No, I, I like Edison a lot. Edison's great. Yeah. Yeah. Just for you, the, the, for those who don't know, um, the reason why it, it sort of happened today is I'm off to Canada on Thursday, my time. So, Tony, is one of them going to be in Canada waiting for me? Because that looks really good. Can I have one of them? Um, they're all sitting <laughs> here in the U.S. currently. Sorry. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> and what, what are they, what's it like for power consumption as well? Because I've seen some of these tiny um, embedded appliances before, but... Uh, they tend to run quite hot. In fact, yeah, you remember that not, little schnom, schnom thing, the dual purpose. Oh, that schnom one was, yeah, yes. Yeah, which used to be dual purpose in that you could run a, a soft PBX on it and you could put your pot, pot of coffee on the top and keep it warm. Okay, this doesn't get hot at all. Um, I actually have these embedded in some Pelican cases as demo systems, so it's actually in, completely encapsulated by foam. And it sits there running for eight hours a day on my bench, and um, you take wow. it out, and it's just barely warm to the touch. That sounds good. That's amazing. And it was this was an Atom CPU, was it, Tony? Yes, it's an Atom-based CPU. It's a dual-core Atom. Wow, that's awesome. Here yeah, I, want, I've actually I've got one of these things. This is a. Um, sorry, I'll let you talk, James. No, 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 no. I want to see your box. Go on. Oh, well, this is this is a little thing called a a, a micro. <laughs> A a microtic. Yeah. Or it's got, mi uh, microtic if you're Andy. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's got it's got five um, network ports on it and it runs off uh, eight 
30 yeah, bolts. Not like 8 to 30 bolts. And, and do you know how much they cost? It's nothing. They, no, they cost. It's cheaper than a Pi. It is cheaper than a Pi with four network ports on it. Yeah. I, I don't know how they do it. Well, they well, they make it in uh, a, a former Soviet republic, don't they? That's that's how they do <laughs> Probably, it. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to nerd out, you know, this is the the chip. Have you guys seen that nine dollar computer? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I've I've ordered yeah. two. They yeah. haven't arrived yet, so I didn't get in quickly enough. Now yeah. yours. Do you have three PBX running on it already, Preston? Yes, I do. <laughs> you wouldn't expect anything yeah. less. Yeah, it actually comes preloaded with Debian. This is, so. sales guy. This is really sad, Preston. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you're VP of yeah. sales from North America, and you're geeking out with onboard computing. Right. <laughs> now, this is so sad because we, we don't have video, and everybody who's listening on the audio feed will be going, oh, my God, I'm missing out. This is a very visual thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really annoyed. We, I have a video recording rolling, gentlemen. Oh, uh, so at least people w will be able to watch it on uh, on YouTube afterwards. You go back yeah, and see Yeah, we'll what cover off the first little bit, but yeah. Yeah. So have you got any more boxes and appliances? Because I love boxes and appliances. <laughs> who's got one of the phones to show off? Because they are really cool. I, I'm, I, I've got to say, like this turned up like two weeks ago, and I... Amazed at how good this phone is, and like Tony's the guy who knows about the phones. I think he's probably gone off for a cigarette or something, though. But no, Preston, I'm here. yes, uh, they are. I'm, I'm truly amazed well, tell us about at the how good these phones are. And show us the phone. Okay, oh. so let's see if I can show you a phone. Actually, um, I could share a screen on a little presentation, but let me see if I can actually get switch cameras and. Uh, Show you my phone. Oh, we love I've this. got this one here. That's, that's sort of, there's, the, there's the screen, if you can see that. I'm not uh, sure that, that's not focused very well. Well, it's subtly uh, branded. Give me the back lid. Uh, put that back up. Put that back up, Rob. Hang on, hang on. Here we go. Here's the, here's the, the thing and the back lid. Hang, hang on, hang on. Just hang on. Hang on. It's your see, light. It's, it's, uh, that actually turns off and on. That's software controlled. Look, see it. The light is off at the moment. I just power cycled it then. Preston's got his phone up as well. But the, hang on, this light's going to turn on in a second. Because it just turns on when it starts. I think it turns on when it gets an IP address. I don't know. Yeah, it's I, 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 I don't. Stack. I know nothing at all about this phone. It's like just it. Oh, there you go. Came on. How cool is that? Little things like that nerd me out. I'm sorry. The coolest thing our <laughs> phone does is it turns on its logo backlight. <laughs> <laughs> Voice functionality coming next. We promise. <laughs> well, we can have one of those if it, if it turns on your backlight. Yeah. So, so maybe. Us, what else does it do? Well, it makes phone calls. Yeah, but we've already found out it doesn't support AMR wideband. <laughs> I'm not saying I, I don't know whether it does. I haven't looked. Does it? Tony's the guy who knows. No, no. It, it does. It, it's got a lot of codecs in it. I just well, don't know which one. Well, come on, Tony. We need to sort out this AMI wideband stuff because there are more mobile endpoints than anything else, and all of the mobile world, every, anything 3G or 4G now, is AMI wideband, and we just hate having to transcode. Yeah, but that would mean Astro would have to support it too, because this is the first cool. phone. Purposely built for asterisk free PBX for free PBX. So this phone's whole design is for free PBX. All the integration of the phone is to free PBX. And even at a support level, you know, our our whole support documentation on this phone is all about free PBX. We'll only provide support with free PBX. It's the first purposely built phone for free PBX in our two and a half three million installs around the world. Well, I, Andy, I, can you can you switch to Preston's view just so because Preston's holding up the the proper GUI. Maybe the, if I if I talk, you you'll go. see me. <laughs> Maybe yeah, not. There you go. It's a little bit out of focus. Can you pull it back a little bit? Yeah. That's even worse, yeah. Yeah, Randy does have the ability. Of course, of course you, you guys, what you guys need to do is is uh, when, you, when you're sort of ready to go big full board dog and pony with the phones, uh, get one in someone's hands and we can set up to properly do an expose on them like we did with the Digium phones way back when. And then you can show us how they run circles around them. Uh, your driver's gone again, Michael. You've gone all Zylon. Yeah. Rather bo boringly. Andy, can you find the uh, URL for my Periscope and put it out there? Yeah, sure. 
going to be really I'm bad because I haven't found a way to to hold the <laughs> to support the camera yet. So I'm holding it and it's shaky. <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel. It's the excitement of seeing the Sangoma phone, Andy. That, that's what, Randy. That's what it is. So are you? Yeah, so this, this phone has a the phone has a long history. It was actually started under Smooth before the acquisition. We actually started working on this design and and manufacturing and and this dreaming of what the ultimate phone would be for free TVX. And you know, after the acquisition of Sangoma, it really allowed us uh, to fast track it and, and move it to reality instead of spending. Two two and a half years, we're able to get it done in about a, just over a year. And I guess if anybody knows what the feature set of the ultimate phone is, it'll be the team with the wall of phones, won't it? Of course, you know we we auto provision and support in free TVX over 350 devices. We've we live and breathe this every day, and you know we we started this little scratch pad document years ago on if we were to ever build a phone, what would the ultimate phone be? And you know, does that mean we, we got everything we want in the phone? No. You know, will we in the next year have even more? Absolutely. But you know, for our first go at it, I think um, you know, from what we've heard back from the customers that got the pre samples, uh, we had a couple hundred pre samples go out to some partners and exclusive customers. The feedback has been crazy uh, on these phones and the pre orders are just stacking up everywhere. Our our partners like Wipe Supply and E four in the US have been taking pre-orders every day um, for the last two weeks, and they keep up in their orders with us because they're selling these things so quick right now. Wow. So we've been extremely uh, happy with the, with the feedback so far. Yeah, I bet right, yeah. The, the boys from Digimon are really pleased to see that turn up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I went I went to Huntsville a few weeks ago, and uh, uh, Mark Spencer is a good friend oh. of mine. Mark and I talk all the time, and um, you know, I just went down there and hang out with Mark and spend a little time with Danny, and, you know, they understand. <laughs> yeah. Preston's well, I, I, got his little they... phone thing up, if you want to have a look at Preston's screen. He's Where? got his little... Uh, oh, yes, on... his presentation thing. thing. That's, so that, that's the three phones. phones there. What, what's the difference? Well, the, apart from the obvious thing, that the one on the left has got a mono display. But what? Uh, just talk us through what the, the differences in features are. Okay, oh, there so we go. Th oh, look yeah. at that. That's a feature. That? There we ever was a, a leading That's question. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> right. So, Good job. So, so we right, start out the, the one thing I'll hit on first, I think, is warning: <laughs> your identity is in use by two other participants. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. That's it. DX. It does that. <laughs> So all of the phones support PoE. We have three phones, uh, our 300, 500, and 700. They're all PoE support. Um, the 5 and 700, of course, gigabit with pass-through. The entry level is a 10, 100 with pass-through. Um, all the phones natively support five-way conference calling on the DSP of the phone. So you don't even have to get asterisk involved in mixing that media with or dumping calls into a conference bridge. Uh, the phone itself will natively do five-way conference calling. And then one of the neat things is native VPN back to your PBX. So the phone will connect back to free PBX and do all of its connections and SIP and everything across the VPN to the PBX to so get rid of all your NAT problems. That's actually so that's kind of my inter Sorry, yeah, go on, Tony. That, that's kind of the overview of the family, the feature set. Um, you know, one of the big things, you know, everyone talks about zero touch provisioning. And I think that's where we really shine because you know, we control the phone, we control free PBX. So when you install free PBX, it comes with a stock template on your, um, a stock setup for Sangoma phones, and you buy your phone and um, set the redirect server. So we have a redirect server like everyone else. We'll explain ours is a little different. But either set option 66 on your network or use our redirect. The phone hits the PBX, and it prompts you what extension you want it to be. Type in your extension number and your voicemail password, or your user password, hit submit, and it loads your config without the phone rebooting in about two seconds, and you're ready to start making calls. So it's a true zero-touch um, provisioning perspective. And then, you know, from a, um, from, a, from a redirect service, you know, all these manufacturers offer redirect service. Um, and, and if you know anything about redirect services, they're very uh, insecure, inherently insecure. You go to this website, and you say, hey, these 15 MAC addresses, if they ever hit this redirect server, tell them to go get their config from this IP address. Well, the problem with that is 
I can hit all these manufacturers' redirect servers, walk down their whole subnet of MAC addresses, and get back all the IP addresses of where the config files are located, and half these servers are on the public Internet with no firewall, and now i got the config for the phone, so now I have your SIP username, your SIP password. I can register your system and start making calls. Tony, don't don't tell anyone. So so iPhones are very different this way. When uh, every phone gets a signed certificate installed at the factory level, every phone has a signed certificate installed, baked into the firmware of the phone, unique to each device. So when it hits our redirect server, we challenge it to get back the certificate from that device. And if that matches with what we have in our servers, then we go ahead and give the redirect for that one device. So it there is, uses, there's no way, yeah, no way for anyone to, um, you know, reverse engineer. Even if you uh, pull one phone apart and strip the certificate out of out of one phone, the only thing you will ever be able to do is get the details for that one phone. Because every phone has its own unique certificate tied tied into the hardware and baked to the hardware. So, by you know, that was one of our biggest issues with redirect is the the na- the nature of them being insecure. So we wanted to solve that here. <laughs> I am the security nerd, um, well, what, uh, probably the biggest security nerd, not the only security nerd inside Sangoma, and this was one of the things that I had a big whinge about, and um, then we made it happen, which was I was real, I was very happy about actually having these phones secure. So, it was good. I was what I was going to say before. Sorry, Tony. Yes. Yeah, from a provisioning perspective, um, you know, just like the one thing we're toying with now that we haven't done that we'll probably introduce here in the real near future is. When the phone goes to the PBX to get its config, we could do the same thing. Since the, the phone has a, a signed certificate signed by RCA authority built into the phone, when the, PB, when the phone hits the PBX and asks for its config, we could have the PBX uh, verify with our upstream server that that certificate matches before it even gives the phone a config. So we could actually do secure provisioning at a level that nobody else could do at this time and make sure that the phone can't even get, we, that a PBX won't even get the config file unless it's a authentic phone with a certificate. That's great. Things like TFTP boot, you know, getting a config file from TFTP boot is, is ridiculously insecure. If you know the MAC address, you have the credentials for the phone. So things like those, those are the things I, I care or about. Or HTTPS, well, both of them. HTTPS, yeah. HTTP, HTTPS, or TFTP. Um, all of them, or if you're using FTP, everyone's like, well, I use FTP with username and password. Well, yeah, but but if you're using a redirect server, you have to tell the redirect server the FTP username and password. So you're, all I have to do is walk down the MAC address subnet, and I can get every... Oh, we lost your audio there, Tony. Awesome. The, the other thing that we do, you might want to touch on, guys, is uh, the VPN client on the phone. I already did. So the phones will yeah. talk... The phones will talk natively to free PBX on a VPN. So in free PBX GUI, you, with, with the click of two buttons, you set up a VPN server, and then when you provision your phones in free PBX, you say, these 10 phones need to use VPN. It generates a client and sends them to the phone. So it's, ideal um, for re- remote users who... Make yes, it. exactly. I, the, I, what I was also going to bring up as well is one of the things, and I'm sort of segueing back to FreePBX here, one of the things that Andrew and I have been spending a lot of time on is getting uh, a, 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 encrypted communications as easy as possible. And, in fact, uh, I'm going to do a, a really quick screen share if I can. Sorry, Preston. Um, just, this is something that we... We did in uh, just recently in FreeBBX 13. Is that it is this is this is how simple it is. Hopefully you guys can see this. Yep. Yep. Oh, there which there should have been a Chan PJ SIP tab there, but um, I didn't turn that on. Give me one second. Um, it is now literally as simple as um, it, putting your certificate in one place, and suddenly everything is enabled. Uh, to use TLS. Oh, uh, where? Oh, uh, where is my PJ SIP going? Hang on, oh, SIP shell drive. Oh, there it is. Sorry, this is uh, me not paying attention. Oh, we, ends... love, we, we love live demos. It's the only way to do it. <laughs> and from here, oh look, now we have Chan PJ SIP, and that's how easy it is in FreePBX. Again, going back to FreePBX to enable Chan PJ SIP. I just did that. See here, we have these 
three entries here. Once you put those in, now these, these can be a self-signed certificate or a, a proper certificate. We actually are almost at the point where we can natively implement Let's Encrypt. Uh, so anyone well, can get their be, own certificate for free. That would be really, really super. And, and have it set up so that it automatically um, does the renewals because Let's Encrypt only gives you short leases or sh short, short... Um, yep. We have it working. We just don't have it in the GUI yet. That's that's how close we are. I, I, I have it the big hold up with Let's Encrypt was we had to build... All, you, Rob, if I remember right, we had to build everything to actually do it all because everything, all their scripts are based for Python 2.7, which most free PBX systems are still running 2.6 on. That's right. Well, we we actually, Andrew um, found a really useful shell script that we yep. can use um, to do all this. So it's just a matter of now actually plugging it in. Um, no, I found the, I found the PHP version for 5.4, and then I re I fixed it for the guy so it works in 5.3. That's what I did. So the PHP so it can be in the GUI. The PHP can control it. We can put it in a cron job. Hang on. Let me just activate this machine. And oh, it's not going to be available on this one. Why? I don't. Rob, uh, Rob? I've got yo. Go to um. At one seven. I think. What? Are you looking for a machine for? Yeah. Are uh, you looking I was just going to see. That's where yeah, I was just. Has oh, 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 oh! Hang way. on, no, I've I've got one. I've got one here. I just realised how how foolish I am. Man of many PBXs. I am. Here's one this is one, that I <laughs> this is one, of, one of my development machines. Everybody everybody, connect to that IP address. Crash it. it uh, <laughs> luckily enough, well, well, this actually has um, this has the new... Oh, it's disabled, but it's there. Um, the, this one machine is running the firewall, and it's IPv6 only, so you're a bit... You can't get to it unless you're running IPv6. Here is the way to do our HTTPS. This is all part of sysadmin in, in FreePBX. So there will be, at some point, a new tab here called Let's Encrypt, where you click on it, and it will just do everything for you. Uh, that's the plan. Right, that right now, we support letting you uh, create a CSR and uploading your cert, or to just do a self-signed cert in FreePBX for HTTPS and SSL stuff. Um, so the if, last piece is just to allow uh, Let's Encrypt. Yeah, it literally, if you do this and click the Generate button, it will do everything for you, and you end up with a self-signed certificate on your machine, and everything just starts working. But obviously, it's self-signed. If you have a certificate already, you just paste it in here and click Install. Oh, I just realized the theming on that button is wrong. Um, <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's that's how it is. I've, I'm always the guy who tends to care about. I shouldn't say always. I'm not always the guy. I, I'm 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 the guy that tends to care about security because I'm. Uh, what, my background. One of the things I didn't talk about is what I did in in the interim while I was away from FreePBX, which is where I went off and worked for Cisco. Uh, I'm a CCIE security. Well, I, let me re rephrase that. I used to be a CCIE security. I let it expire many years ago because. Where I am now is, um, if you think of Australia like this, at Queensland, the pointy bit up here, I'm sort of in the middle of nowhere in Queensland. So if you look at, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you look at map, a map of the uh, a map of Australia, I'm in the middle of nowhere. So where I am now, I have no need at all to be um, uh, to keep my CCIE up. So I let that, it expire that, and it's that this. explains your energy for partying when you were actually escaped to Orlando the other day. Because we were all trying to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> and your your ability to consume things. Anyway, we, let's not go there. <laughs> what else can you tell us about free PBX, which is exciting? Well free free PBX on uh, on on small um, um, appliances is is something which is sexy. It is it is very sexy. One of the things that uh, that I spent a little bit of time doing in FreePBX 12 is back in the in the mists of time we used to support 
uh, or we never, I don't think we ever actually got to the point of supporting it, but it used to work, which was SQLite, in that you could have SQLite as your back end for everything, which is just amazing for a tiny little embedded device. Um, whilst MySQL is, you know, reasonably overpowered, you know, running on a Pi that's going to take a yeah, good chunk of your resources. So running SQLite is, is, is amazingly good. So I spent a little bit of time in FreePBX 12 sort of hacking SQLite into, into play again, and that, and that worked, and it got there and it worked. It was never actually merged into the production branch, though, because at the time we were doing a lot of work with, uh, if I may delve into code here, um, into BMO, which is our big module object, um, which was one of the things we were caring a lot about in FreePBX 2.11, there was huge chunks of PHP 4 code lying around. Um, one of the things we've cared a lot about in FreePBX 12 and 13, and Andrew has been the main driver behind this, is getting everything up to a reasonably modern standard of code in that we have an autoloader that works now. And if anyone looked at the code from FreePBX 2.8 or 2.9, that was something that was totally you know, it, it never going to happen. But uh, yeah, we do it now. We've got in FreePBX 13, we have a fully functional autoloader. It's almost PSR1 compliant, and I, I, I'm afraid I'm nerding on a bit much for people who don't know about PHP code. But um, well, we also have we also moved away from solely MySQL. So like you were saying with with SQLite, now we use PDO, which PDO is as uh, PHP's version of a uh, data abstraction layer. Um, but what's nice about that is if you use PDO, which we do now, you can actually use ODBC in there as well because they have an ODBC driver, they have a SQLite driver, they have tons of drivers for that. So that's nice because now we don't solely rely on MySQL. Though we haven't checked with SQLite, right? You haven't checked SQLite in 13 with PDO? Yeah. I, I, I'm certain it won't work. There are still th some things like... Um, oh, some constructors and stuff, uh, some, sorry, SQL commands aren't... Correct. Yeah, I remember having to go but through it. Now it was you very have, trivial. But, but now it all runs through your data. So we put a data abstraction layer on top of the data abstraction layer because, you know, data abstraction layers, you need more data abstraction layers, right? So, <laughs> yo, yo, dog. But we can I do that in ours. <laughs> <laughs> so we could fix those commands in a top level, level layer now and not have to fix it per module, which is nice, especially for so the, the SQLite stuff. Yeah, so things like being able to run... Uh, a, a fully functional system on a Pi or on a, a Microtech or yeah, these little tiny things is definitely plausible. I mean, people run this FreeBSD yeah, on Pi's today. Now that's an interesting thought, Rob, because the the, the Microtech router board, the hardware, is so flipping cheap for what it is. Um, the thought of being able to run FreeBSD on that is something that's quite attractive. I'm actually going to look. This 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 has been sitting on my desk for for about a month now, and I keep going. I really want to see what's inside it, so I'm going to open it up right now. Live dangerous demo of me opening up a Microtech to see how much memory it's got at this very moment. Because if it's got, you know, it's got a even it's got a decent amount, doesn't it? Andy, you've had one apart, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've had a few of these sorts of things apart. This is the grand unboxing, is it? <laughs> Do you remember how much it's got in it? I know there are different variants, aren't there? Um, well, not that one. I haven't, I haven't had that one apart. Where's yours? Have you got one handy? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> well, what good are you, then? <laughs> You've had it tidy up. Uh, yes, I have. And then, then you're going to ask me where I put it, and there's no point in doing that, because I haven't got the vaguest clue where it is now. Well, we just have to buy some more, won't we? Yeah, both well, Andy and I suffer from uh, gadget overload sometimes. Uh, yeah. well, I took the uh, the chip and you know this little nine dollar computer board it comes preloaded with Debian and with the instructions right in on a wiki that I believe Andrew wrote, Andrew and Rob wrote installed FreePBX thirteen and Asterix thirteen uh, compiled it right on the box. Plenty of power you know, for yeah. little nine dollar. I, I don't know where my chip. Tips plural, are going to turn up, but um, if you if free PBX runs on those, that'll be one of them spoken for. <laughs> I'm just I've just pulled this open. That's the flash chip, and I'm actually going to Google and see how see how big that flash chip is. 
I think it's a 16 gig, which 16 gig is heaps. That's more than enough to run 3 yeah. And those, and you can buy those boards um, for I don't know, it's what 25 quid over here, something like that. So let's have a look. This is a a router board um, 750GL. That's that's the one I've got here. TC588. TC5. You know what, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to the language, and one word that has come up quite a lot is the word care or caring. The other word that has come up quite a lot is geeky. So I think we can safely say that the free PBX team are a bunch of very caring geeky geeks. So, <laughs> so you're saying we're nerds? Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with nerds. Nerds will in inherit the earth. They're, they're a sort of different type of geek, really, because they go around in packs. I, I still swear there were more Sangoma uh, t-shirts at Astricon than there were Digium ones. There was slight but that's because... Digium and <laughs> well, Astricon, I thought. Well, well, this year we did Free PBX World at Astricon as well, so we did have our own sessions. So we did have a lot of our base there as well. Yeah, well, Sangoma are slowly kind of... Assimilating the world, aren't they, bit by bit? Uh, well, I mean, we're you know, a thirty-year-old company. We started out with cards, and then added gateways, then added SBCs, added a PBX last year, and, and it's things added, like added, that. added phones this year, and Microsoft Link as well. Awesome. Yeah. That Link. Did you say like, awesome or awful? Like, didn't quite. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we we know all about the pain involved in trying to get Link up and running. And if you can go out and you can buy an appliance, which you, which just works, if you're a small to medium sized enterprise, it's a bit of a gift, really. Okay. Why would you not want to do that? I think, the next, to step is, I think the next step is to have Sangoma as a sponsor for the VUC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, now that's harking back a year or two. I, I think Rob sponsored some of the drinks at uh, uh, Astrocon, right? Yeah, I wasn't there, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, he, he drank most of them. Most of the drinks. I, yeah, I, I think I sponsored a couple of bottle shops. That's what I sponsored. Yes, you I, did. As, saying that, Andy helped as well with that wonderful selection of Canadian whiskey. Yeah, there. you're <laughs> absolutely right. That's the only thing that was left over at the end was that Canadian whiskey. <laughs> I couldn't even give it away, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, you were There's forcing it. a good reason for that. I tried it. <laughs> oh, you did? Forcing, forcing it on that poor girl behind the reception desk, weren't you? You've got to have this. She's going, no. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she had the right of that, definitely. Yeah. For those that, those that don't know who weren't there, we all we went, went to this wonderful bottle shop in, um, in Orlando, and it had... Aisles and aisles of fantastic booze, and it was really cheap. And 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 he went, oh look, here's this plastic bottle of Canadian whiskey, and it's like four liters. It's a jug. It's a jug of Canadian whiskey, and it's three dollars. This is going to be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and oddly enough, it wasn't. It was <laughs> worth it for the look on Alison's face though when she saw it. <laughs> yeah, and and I. Uh, I can't tell you what the uh, Israeli contingent said, but they, they were not amused with their sort of $150 bottles of Israeli wine next to the <laughs> plastic Canadian whiskey. <laughs> That's what happens when I don't go. Yeah. Well, well we, we, we had a wine tasting which turned into let's drink lots of scotch or, or whiskey of some sort. Are we done with free PBX or not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think um, if it makes sense, maybe we'll get you a phone and we'll actually do a th maybe do a session where we have video and and uh, that way yeah. we can do a little dog and pony show on the phones if that makes sense to you guys. And, well, we want to do a, a live dangerous demo where yeah. you've got uh, free PBX in somewhere like Australia or something like that, and then you've got phones all over the world, and then you can invite. Um, people like me to have their devices uh, provisioned yes. automatically, <laughs> remotely, um, and then we can all join in. Over uh, IPv6. Uh, well, why not? Absolutely. You know it. Well, well actually, IPv6 is, uh, again, 
Cisco Internet nerd. IPv6 is something I'm caring a lot about. IPv6 is uh, fully one. supported. Yeah, well, IPv6 is fully supported in PJSIP in asterisk 13. Um, we sort of kind of support it mostly in FreePBX. It's like it's very rarely it's going to be make it's going to be almost impossible to make it work with ChanSIP. Um, However, uh, one of the things that we have on our target for uh, FreePBX 14 is 100% IPv6 compatibility with FreePBX 14. Uh, and the reason why I say this is, for those who don't know, there are no IPv4 addresses left. That's it. They're gone. They're, if you don't have an IPv4 address allocated to your uh, uh, network at the moment, you can't get any more. Apparently, uh, Tim has 256 of them if you need any. <laughs> Actually, funnily enough, I have. Um, I'm really lucky in that I have a huge number of IPv4 addresses that I. Uh, I used to run an ISP many, many years ago, uh, and I've kept all those IP addresses. And because they're legacy IP addresses, they don't cost me anything, so I just keep them. There's no, you know, at some point maybe in the future I'll sell them for a million bucks if IPv6 doesn't take off and people are willing to pay money for them. So are they provider independent, or are you that you tied yeah. to an existing IP? All oh, right, cool. No, no. So I've, so I've got my own AS. Right, all right. I haven't got round to getting my own AS yet. It didn't. It hasn't proved to be necessary. Yeah, uh, but we so. have own our AS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, for, again, most people don't need it. It's only for random nerds. Um, Above or, a certain age. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so, Tim, are, Tim, are we looking at your new lighting system? Uh, you actually are. I'm not sure I like it. But it's it looks good. It looks good. It's, it's slightly pink, but that's probably a natural color. Yeah, give give us a URL so we can change it for you. I'm working <laughs> on that, James. I am actually spent today working on that. Um, you, you know we, we love I doing I know fun. that you want. I know exactly what you want, and uh, it might be amusing to allow it to happen occasionally. Although, uh, there was somebody who I won't name who admitted to having his entire house on the internet uh, this afternoon in a while. Yeah, you... <laughs> and I, 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 I warned okay, him that I thought on. there were risks involved in that. Yeah, definitely. I, I did see that, yes. I'm going to kill the... Uh, I don't know how well this went over on uh, whatever it was, uh, um, Periscope. We should probably end this. And there's a button I have that could start a new Hangout, and I'm curious to see if it's going to broadcast. Just as an experiment. But I think we're kind of done here unless uh, I missed something. Look at my dictionary oh. stack here. Any, what's the final thing? We need to have a URL to go to, which is probably freepbx.org, freepbx.org, right? That's it. That's it. And um, events you guys are going to be at, anybody? What did you have? Has that been mentioned or not? Come I, I'm world, in Canada anybody? For, I'm in Canada for five, five weeks, oh, pushing well, buttons we'll and breaking things. We all have our cross to bear. Well, who's, going, uh, who's doing free PBX in Europe? Um, we've got a, quite a few partners there, uh, Boypon and a few others. I, I handle North America, so um, as far as the sales organization, I used to handle the entire planet, but uh, on people that actually speak the languages and would, are, are in the offices in those parts of the world do a little better job than I do from my seat in South Carolina. Aluminium. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but if we put on a, a, a Sangoma partner anyway, um, yes. do, you have, do you have much of community de development uh, over in Europe at all? Do, do, do the Europeans all decide they're going to go a different route? Uh, Europe is actually uh, one of the markets, uh, I mean, the UK in particular is one of the markets where we have a huge install base. Um, Russia, ironically, is large. Um, and it's it's um, something that definitely that they're working on with, um, especially with the phones getting distribution out to um, the rest of the world for for the phones. So yeah, the, 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 tough, the like. tough part from a sales perspective of running an open source project is trying to monetize it and and pay these uh, you know keep Rob and Andrew and the lifestyle they're now accustomed to. Oh, look, 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 look at this. I'm drinking real brand Pepsi now. I don't none of this LAI stuff anymore. Well, I imported from Dubai. Did it say Dubai on it? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> but, but look, Russia is one of the things where uh, Andrew has put a lot of work in, into our internationalization and localization. It's, it's something we care a lot about. And we actually, like, people can go to um, 
uh, what's it, weblight.freebbx.org? Weblight. Right? Yeah, it's the translation engine, yeah. Yeah, all of our yeah, backends use F8, too, so that you can actually utilize naming things with foreign characters. And there is actually like an Australian language that, you know, you can go there and create an Australian language and put lots of swearing into it and, you know. <laughs> should... Yeah, so actually there's there's a conference in South Africa soon, the Asterisk Conference. Uh, then there's one in the Middle East. Most of the upcoming conferences are outside of North America, so I don't have the specific, specific dates on those. But uh, um, definitely for probably the next couple of months, it's, it's all about the rest of the world as far as any of the conferences that we're attending. Okay. Well, everybody needs to go to freepbx.org and check them out. And, uh, folks, I'm really so sorry that we had an incredible, uh, it's absolutely absurd, first time out of 200 videos event where there is no video, apparently. But Michael Michael recorded it, so it's hopefully part of it's recorded. And the Periscope was pretty bad. I was looking at it on my laptop. That's not going to do anything. I'm going to um, end this Hangout, and thanks to everybody. And we have a great community. I mean, video or no video, we most of us have met in person, um, and it's just a fantastic community, and we appreciate your, your participation in it. Rob, I don't think I've met you because you're awfully far away, and I wasn't at I the am. last couple well, of we've Astrocons. we've met him because we go to Astrocon. You have met him, and um, uh, definitely met Preston a couple of times. So, you know, that should... Count for something, shouldn't it? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I do try my best to get to Astrocon. Obviously, it, it depends on um, my availability and whether Tony wants to pay me to go there. Yeah, well, I've been very unavailable for that recently. Here's my dictionary, though. See, that was holding up the phone. Anyway, thanks, everybody. We're going to cut this off. You guys stay in. We'll still be on ZipDX, so no off-the-record stuff. We're still live, but I'm going to do an experiment here in a second. Thanks, everybody, for... Uh, the Hangout, and again, my apologies because I don't know why I'm saying this because nobody's watching because there's no live video. So <laughs> here we go. Anyway, enough of that.